I want that push kick. Push kick is the one I'm, I'm looking at. So if, he, so if your guy jab kicks, you can practice both. Jab kick, and I'll up, and I'll just get back. Push kick, remember, it's a cross side, and I'm doing that same, that same body movement, digging it, keep my shoulder high, keep my hand high, and that way, if he throws a kick and a punch behind it, I can deal with it, because my hand was right there, still able to do something. All right, so you can throw that jab kick, and I'm getting away, I'm getting away. Push kick, boom, get right in on the guy. Now let's try so there's different ways to deal with that roundhouse kick. Um, again, if he does the lead leg roundhouse where he, there you go, he cheat steps and he goes after my leg, I might just pick my shin up and just shin block him. All right, you just try to match ankles basically. Not, not exactly, but that's pretty much what you're doing. You're using your shin and the meat on your shin to basically stop him from hitting one of your weak points. All right, and then he'd probably want to you know, since he made contact, go again. Boom, I might want to use that. Or you can pick it up if he kicks that one. Boom, pick it right up, go into my single. Um, but again, I want to deal more with that, that rear leg, the one that hurts. Well, front leg can hurt pretty good, you know what they're doing, but bang, yeah, that one. All right, different ways to deal with it. Um, again, if he swings it, I can swim that too. I can do the same thing as a straight kick. It just takes more coordination because it's it's coming around. If it comes around here and I swim it and I don't get my distance right, you know, I'll help him kick me a little bit. Um, so you want to just make sure you get that distance. Be aware of that hand. But if you want to enter on the inside, basically I'm going to step towards his standing leg as he throws it and try to beat it. And I'm going to keep my head down so it doesn't hit me. I, I scoop the knee, I get the ankle, and now I'm gonna do a rear angle step. So I stepped forward, and now I got it. I'm gonna step back, shoulder down, drag him past. That's if you wanna advance inside. If you feel confident about the timing, maybe the guy's slow or something. I step in and then backwards. In, backwards, throw the shoulder. Throwing that shoulder, helps drag them down. You'll have those moments where the guy stands, try to say standing, or I go here, he's stink standing. Do it, throw in that shoulder, a pop. That'll get him down a lot of times. Here, pop. I don't want to be too aggressive in here. But. So there's advancing inside. And then if you want to stay away, like the guy's really big, I'm going to try to match the, match the kick a little bit. And I'm going to stay out here. Yeah, until he falls. A lot of people aren't prepared for that. So that's if you think you can do it. A good rule of thumb would be to keep this guy here in case you don't you don't get it right. And but what's helping me is let's say I was here when he initially kicked me. That means his kick from right there is is generated so that it gets it gets its power, you know, power point right there. But past that, it starts to lose power fast. So as he kicks, I move into this zone. So that way when I take it, it's, there's less of a chance of it hurting me. All right, so your options. He throws it, I can swim it, okay, and come in. I can advance on it and rear angle step and shut him down. Or I can step out here and just spin him around, all right? With that one, you just keep pulling away from him. Just keep tugging away, like away from his balance and in a circle. And if you, you can move faster than he can on one leg. Or if it's not working, you can abandon it. Just go right, right into a clinch again. Get a takedown. All right? Pick one of those, whichever one you like. So for blue belt, I've written tackle. Purple, I've written double leg. It's the same thing, it's just one's more advanced. All right, so for blue belt, tackle. The guy's just coming at you like a dummy, right? Head down, arms wide. All right, that one's easy. So he comes in, come in. That shoulder's first. That's what I need to identify. That shoulder's first. It's closer, so I underhook it. If I don't, he's going to get my leg or my hips, right? And then I'm, I'm done. So he comes in, underhook. My next hand is going to go somewhere right around the shoulder and neck area. I want to be able to 
feel his balance with that one. If he's, if he's small, maybe I'll hunker in and stop him if I want to. If he's big, that tells me he's coming this way, and through my sense of touch, I know step off the line, get out of the way. Your sense of touch is going to be better than your eyes in most cases. So, boom, I feel that impact. I know that my back leg needs to do a rear angle step to get off the line of attack, especially if he's big and strong. So, again, he comes in under hook, get at the neck, and then to finish it, we want to. We want to switch. Like I have one hand here and one here. I want to switch them. You're going to basically shove their head through and make them do a roll. So you're here. Make them do a roll. Follow them in. Put the knee on them. Pin that arm. Be like, knock it off or I'm going to knock you out. All right. And another thing that helps too is uh, trying to match their level. If, I, if he comes in and I'm up here and you go low, Right? Oh, it's kind of hard. So on top of everything we just had there, I'm going to try to match him. All right. So there's a, a tackle. Shot is the same thing. I'm just having, I just want you to train with a bad guy that's a little more intelligent. The guy is going to get your distance, right? He's not just going to come in. He's going to come out here. Yeah. Here, let me, let me show you my, my version. So he's going to be out here, he, maybe he won't come in straight, like I'm not going to shoot straight on you, you're ready for that. Maybe I'm going to come in here, Zoom. or maybe maybe I'll come in here, Zoom. right, come in, in on an angle, on the 11 or the 1 o'clock, right, or the 10 or the 2, just not up the 12. They're going to time it differently, so it's more like the, the same move as the tackle, we just want you to get better about that timing. So if you stop me a little bit and then try to trick me, come in on an angle. Boom. Boom. Right? I want to identify that. Um, also, with that shot where you drop to the knee, right? That's more for somebody who you know is going to be there. And they're like, maybe they're like lean forward or something. But if, if the guy is mobile and you drop to the knee like that, just move. Right? I still may catch something. But if we're talking self-defense, you know, you're going to eat some knees and stuff. Um, I personally don't like dropping my knees to the ground like that. Because first you'll hit them on the ground, like on the concrete right there. That ain't going to feel good. And second, like you just need, you need to be able to get under their hips. If my hips are lower than his hips, when I grab something and stand up, I'm going to do some, I'm going to do something to his balance. And, and I personally have some back issues, some low back stuff, so I don't like going all the way down here to this standard sauce. And that worked pretty good in the old days, but um, and you still make it work if you're a good, you know, practitioner. It's just not my cup of tea coming all the way down here. You can come to the outside if you want to pick them up, but um, but practice both. If you're going for blue, practice it against the tackle, or if you want, just do the shot anyway. If you're purple. Uh, basically opponent just try to be a little more smart about it try to like get a little closer take an angle try to set an arm up or something and when they do it just jump back just jump away from them and use the same move all right worked out a little bit so for blue belt we're going to add in clinch for purple clinch with knees same technique um, it's just the stakes are higher at purple Right, so when if a guy clinches, if he clinches up real good, he's gonna come in here, behind the neck, a lot of guys will grab here and pinch here. So, you know, some will just grab the neck with both and pinch there. But when they pinch, it allows them to push their elbows into your shoulders and pull your neck down, right? It takes away your spinal alignment, you got no power, no mobility, you can't see what's going on. And they got all the time in the world to jerk you around and then bust you with a knee, right? So it's imperative that you get out of there. And it's really hard to get out of if you don't know what you're doing. You'll be, you'll be clawing at this all day. Like, Argh! right? And you just get beat up. All right, so the standard version, if he gets his clinch on me, I'm gonna cross face and hook, right? So this hand is getting an overhook right on the elbow. This hand is just getting a cross face, right? And I'm trying to open up a hole here. 
Then I'm going to take this hand here and I'm going to swim up through here and switch to the other hook here. Third step, I swim up here and I pull a clinch on him instead. All right? So again, he comes in cross face and hook, swim and hook, swim and clinch. All right? Work that for a few minutes to get comfortable. This seems with like it. a really good one to know because I can see that happening. Oh, yeah. happens all the yeah. time, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, work that. And these here, if you got a nice wall to work with, so he clinches me and he's he wants to throw knees. First off, I can I can try to put my hands on his hips so I can gauge if a knee is coming. If he's big and strong, though, that's not going to stop him. He'll blast through it, but it will it will provide some measure of a block for a moment. You don't want to hang here, though. It's more like here and go to work, right? But you can start here and then you can try to get this guy towards a wall. If you can get him towards a wall. Boom. It's going to be a lot easier for you to do this and to stop him from kneeing you. Because if he can't wind up that much, he can't throw very effective knees. You can still throw him, and if he hits you in the chain, he can still get you real good. But um, it's going to be a lot easier on you. So if you can get him against the wall, do so. But if not, there's that. Also, um, you can try to time it. If you can't get out, boom, you can elbow his knee. Elbow his knee, bang. Implement the strategy. Sorry about that. So you uh, could push him up against a jukebox or a pool table. Yes. I'm, I'm thinking a roadhouse. Yeah, jukebox, <laughs> get him off, run him through the bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if, if you can't avoid it, he's going to throw a knee. You're going to elbow him on the knee. Um, so I've had luck sometimes with doing the, the old karate X block, right? It'll just stop grabbing the punch. He's gonna grab my Kyla, and then he's, but yeah, you go, leave the end. Yeah, he's gonna smash me in the face, right? So a lot of times we've had techniques in the curriculum where you do a lot of, you know, moves and stuff. You may be able to get that, but honestly, this is what's gonna happen most of the time. When they grab your shirt like that, they're gonna try to smash you in the face. Well, luckily we already know how to deal with this. So one hand is on your collar. That's one hand that's not punching you, right? So keep it there. Keep it. And then if they're big and strong, you're not going to have an easy time manipulating this arm, right? So the best thing you can do is work against their shoulder, my whole body versus his shoulder, right? So I'm not even going to address any of this. I'm going to keep this. When he throws that, I'm going to slip it and go under. I'm at the extension of his arm. I didn't even try to bend his arm. Also, keep in mind, he's going to pull you in with this naturally as he punches, maybe not a lot, but it's, there's going to be a pulling effect going on there. It'll it'll aid you. So answer the phone, right? Be your guard in case you get hit. But you're not trying to block this. You're trying to go under it. You want to ghost it. But you're guarded up in case you keep doing that up. Get your head on them, ear on them. Make sure they don't elbow you. Get your clinch. You can take it back if you want. Do one of your takeouts. All right? It's pretty simple. But you got to learn how to address it because that's another choke point for people People like just bang, 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 they just get beat up. So he grabbed, I cover it, he pulled me in boom, I dumped that sucker. Alright? Try that one. Here you guys work together. So check out the grab here. There's, there's another don't. So these guys, just, these are just guys just run another thing to life. So if, let's say the guy has a short, he feels like a tight cross, right? It's not going to be easy to duck that. So I'm going to rotate it just like we did with the uppercuts. Boom. And then they come in. All right? So throw that. Grab and throw the tight one. Boom. Here. Just send that sucker. Boom. Boom. All right? I'm just going to rotate it in this time instead of ducking it. All right? So... Yeah, I was watching you go, ah, oh, I better address that. All right, go ahead and work that. So I got a cold in color. Let's say he wants to he wants to 
which I have parts of me, because most people, they might throw some roundhouse kicks at your thighs, but, you know, that's that's not hard to do. Right? Just put your foot on the same kicking leg, right? It's not, it's not a hard thing to deal with. Um, well, a lot of guys are going to try to walk right up and try to punch you. Bang, they're going to try to kick you like that, all right? So first step, when he walks up, boom, hips off the ground. When he walks away, hips back up. He walks in, hips up, walks back, hips back. When he comes in, he maybe takes an angle, right? Hips up, they're falling. Hips up, they're falling. All right? Now the punch. <coughs> if he throws a punch wide towards the side of my head, the one wide, bang, I can guard it here. If he happened to get that close. If he throws one up, up the middle, well, I'm just going to pass it as if I were standing. Right? He's, if he's going straight at my face with it, boom. Just going to pass it, and you can add a little oblique crutch in there. Boom. Get yourself out of the way. Now, whether it's wide or it's straight, you need to just know instinctively how to deal with either one. He throws one of them, boom. I'm going to pass it, and I'm going to grab his tricep. Or if you if you got to sleep and you get it, that's good. You can, or if you can get the wrist, maybe you can just, all you can manage is to get here. That's fine. But ideally, I want it to swing deep and I steal it here. You can you can muckle it if you have to, right? If you goon and everything, just get a hold of that sucker, right? Because you don't want him to hit you. It's gonna be a lot harder for him. He's gonna try to hit you with that backhand, but if you hold this good enough, he ain't gonna be able to hit you hard. Now I keep that same heel on his hip. Get the ankle, drop back, tripod sweep. Knock him down, stand up. Alright? Alright. Go one more time. Actually, here, I'll make this one down here. Watch your feet. Just like this. Hit it up off the ground, there you go. And you're basically putting your weight back into me. I try to come around the side. I try to swing wide. Boom! Just into the floor without that one. Boom! Just head right there. So,